In this series of videos, we've been looking at test-driven design and behavior-driven design in Android Studio using Kotlin. In this video, we have a test-driven design test written, and we need to start creating the behavior that this test is going to test. So when we're in this state, we are likely in a place where we have a test that has a whole bunch of red lines that indicates that things don't exist yet. That's good because it gives us a checklist of things that we can work off of. So we see that we have this thing called MVM, which is a main view model class, and that class already exists. If it did not exist, this class would redline, and our first step would be to create the class. But as it is, it's there. But we see there are some things that are missing. There's something called fetch plants, which accepts a string and appears to not return anything. So we need to make a function called fetch plants. There's also a property called plants, which probably is some type of live data because it has this observe forever block attached to it, which is what we tend to see when we see live data. So let's remember then, fetch plants is a method we're going to need, and plants is an attribute that we're going to need. So let's go ahead and look at this view model and see what we can do, and maybe there are even some things we can do right here from our unit test. So I look at fetch plants, I hold alt, I press enter, and let's take a look at create member function main view model dot fetch plants. I hit that and take a look at where it takes me. It takes me to the main view model and it takes me to this class which has been empty up to this point, but note that it stubs out a function for me. Now I want to give this parameter a bit of a better name, so we'll say plant name, just like so. And in this case we now have our function. Let's go back to our unit test again and note that that red line has gone away. Okay, let's take a look at this plants red line. Now it's probably going to have a bit of a difficult time guessing what this should be, but let's go ahead and hit create member property. Once again, notice it takes us into this class that we're testing, and it starts us off with a suggestion of what we're going to need. So it says val, which is declaring a variable which is essentially final. Let's change this to var for the moment. Any means, not sure what type it's going to be. It could be any type. Let's be a little bit more specific here and say mutable live data. Live data, remember, can be observed. And then we'll say within that we have an array list of plant objects. And remember, we made our plant DTO uh, a little bit earlier. Now, this is by default a public attribute. We can do a little trick to do some encapsulation in Kotlin. We might come back and do a bit of refactoring for that. But for the moment, we'll just say equals mutable live data array list plant. So we're essentially instantiating an object and restoring it into this plant's uh, attribute here. More on that to come later. Let's go ahead and save, and let's go back to our test one more time. Okay, here's the cool thing. Take a look at our test, and we see just by adding those two things, our test now compiles. But now to run it, I went to view, and then I chose exit distraction free mode, so I could see the little, uh, the little run test icons here. I'm going to go ahead and run uh, search for redbud returns redbud, and let's see what happens now. Not a big surprise, but it failed based on an assertion error, and you see uh, we have very descriptive method names because they tell us exactly where it failed. So we click here and we see that it failed on assert true redbud found because when it went to do a search on this, it didn't see any redbuds come back. Well, that's not a major surprise because our model view view model, or sorry, our view model class isn't actually calling anything. Let's take a look at that guy. We see that we have this fetch plants that's not actually doing anything. Let's go back to Argo and remember that we're going to make a new service class that this is dependent on. So the main view model is going to call this plant service, and the plant service class is actually going to handle fetching the plant data from some external source. Could be a database, could be a RESTful endpoint, it could be one of any number of things, but that's why we put it into a separate package so that we can swap that out as needed. So maybe we're using a web service right now, but later we want to use a JSON service. Okay, we simply swap out the service class. Let's go ahead and make the service class. And to do that, I right click and I choose new. I'm going to say package first and we'll say service. So we'll put all of our service or business logic classes in the service package. And then we're going to say new and then we'll say Kotlin class. And we'll change this one to class and we'll call this one plant service. Okay, add it to get, that's fine. Now within the plant service, we're going to have a function called uh, fetch plants, 
And that also is going to take a, a plant name as a string variable and then open close curly. Let's have this return mutable live data array list plant, something we've seen before. And we'll do one at a time. Note that in Kotlin, we put the return type of the function after the function and after a colon. So that indicates what's getting returned here. At the, at the moment, we don't want to reach out and do all of this actual JSON. So we're just going to return a mutable live data that contains an array list of plant data objects. We'll just make a new empty unit right there and save and close. Remember, this is a service class that we've just created. So let's go back to our view model class and let's make a relation between this view model class and our server class. To do this, I can simply say var plant service of type plant service equals plant service. Now, I could probably encapsulate this a little bit better, but for the speed of the video, just not going to worry about that one just yet. We'll go ahead and leave this as public. That's actually going to help us in just a minute overdoing some encapsulation. Now, within the fetch plants, we're going to say plant service dot fetch plants. And we're going to assign the result of that to this plants attribute we've declared up above. So notice we invoke the fetch plants method. It returns a mutable live data, which contains an array list of plants. We save that into this plants attribute, which is essentially public, so we can access it from other places. We also need to pass the search term in plant name, just like so. And now this looks good. So we save and we go back to our unit test and we try running this test one more time. I have a hunch it's not going to succeed, but that's okay, that's why we have test-driven development. So what I did is I simply right-clicked and chose Run. It's running in the background as we, as we watch now. We receive a message that the test failed with an assertion error. Again, no big surprise here. Uh, same issue as before, it can't find the red button. Okay, so what we could do now is, is one of two things. We could go back to our service class and we could actually implement all of the logic to make this go out, fetch JSON, parse the JSON into objects, and then return add those objects to a collection, in this case an array list, and then return those objects as mutable life data. We could do that, but that assumes a lot of complication, which is where we start to say, oh gosh, uh, maybe it's too complicated to do a unit test anyway. And that's the behavior we want to try to avoid. So first thing we need to do is go to our build.gradle and add a dependency. And the build.gradle we want is the one in the app module. Let's go ahead and go there. Now we need to add the mock k dependency. So uh, test implementation, because I'm not in an instrumented test, uh, at the time of this recording, io mock k mock k189 is a fairly recent version. As always, I encourage you to do a little bit of searching because there might be a newer version by the time you watch this video. We'll go ahead and choose sync now and we'll go back to our plant data unit test. The sync will take just a few moments. Now, once we've added that Gradle dependency, take a look at what we can do in our unit test class. We can say var plant service, which is the that service that we want to mock. And then we can simply say mock with two Ks and then angle bracket plant service close angle bracket, open and close parens. Let's take care of our imports here, alt enter on plant service and alt enter on mock. Once the Gradle dependency is done, we're going to have that. So now what we're saying is take a look at this plant service, use it as a type, but we want to be able to mock all of our own dependencies. Now, if we take a look at our tests, most of them have a call out of given a feed of plant data are available. So we can piggyback off of this. As a matter of fact, what I might do is I might refactor and rename this and say given a feed of mocked plant data are available only because we can repurpose this test when we do have our uh, feed of data. Right now it's a unit test, but when we have the actual feed of data, we can take out the mock and we can treat this as an integration test. So let's go ahead and set it like so, and then we'll say uh, create mock data. And we'll make that a new function so that we can kind of visualize things a little bit easier. Now, create mock data. This is where things are going to start to get a little bit fun. So first thing we need to do is say um, var all plants live data equals mutable live data of an array list of plants. Now, that might seem a little bit familiar. Hopefully it does because it is the return type of our plant service. And that's essentially 
what we want to mark here. Let me go ahead and fix that. There we go. So remember, plant service returns mutable life data array list plant. And we're just making a dummy mock, essentially, of this method right here. That's what we're trying to do. Back to our unit test. Okay, mutable life data, what does that mean? Mutable means it's changeable. Live data means it's observable. And observable given the Android application life cycle, or the Android activity life cycle. An array list is a collection, and in this case, it's a collection of plant objects. The easiest thing for us to do from here is to create and populate this array list of plant objects and then add it to the mutable live data. So the next thing that we need to do is create a all plants array. So we'll save our all plants equals array list plant, just like so. And then we'll give ourselves some space and then we'll say all plants live data dot post value, which is how we add something to a mutable live data, and then we'll say all plants. So between these two lines, we're going to need to create and add plants to our collection. A few more things we're going to need to do, but let's take things one at a time. So let's say var redbud equals, and then we'll say plant, and we'll say 83 is the, uh, oops, uh, not 83, sorry, we'll say Genus is Circus. Note the context sensitive help above kind of reminds me what I need to type here. Species equals Canadensis. And common is Eastern Redbud. And then we simply need to take this and add it to our all plants collection. We'll repeat this pattern two more times for the other uh, plants that we're testing. And by the way, what plants are we testing? We'll just take a look at our given one then and we'll see that we have a a redbud test here where we're searching for uh, eastern redbud. So let me go up a little bit. Uh, given a mock of plant data are available when search for redbud, then result contains eastern redbud. So we want to make sure that we have redbud data available. In our design document, we also had some tests for oak. So let's make a couple of oak trees. We'll save our red oak equals plant. Note that I'm pushing everything essentially through the constructor here. So Quercus and then we'll say rubra, and then we'll say red oak, and once again we'll say all plants add red oak, and one more time var white oak equals plant, and we'll say quercus, and then rubra, uh, uh, alba, and then white oak, and all plants dot add white oak, just like so. Okay, so what we've done is we've assembled what we want the return data to look like. Now we have to say, when this method is called, return this dummy data. Let's go ahead and do that now. In mock k, what we'll do is we'll say every, and then have an open curly. Uh, let's go ahead and import that every statement. Within the open curly, we're going to say plant service dot fetch plants. Now it gives a little red line because it's expecting a value to be passed, and we need to just say what type of value to expect. We could hard code in redbud, like so. Or we could say any, and that just means could be anything. If I give a generic identifier of string, it means any string will trigger this result. So that's actually an important step because you can have different behavior based on what's passed into a method. Here we're saying give the same behavior regardless of what's being passed in. But we do have an option to say, if it's a red bud, give me only red buds back. If it's an oak, give me only oaks back. And that might actually be a little bit better. Now, after the close curly, we say returns with an S and then all plants live data. And finally, we need to take this mocked plant service and we need to wire it up to our main view model. So mvm.plantService, remember we created that attribute earlier in this video as a public attribute, and I mentioned leaving it public was gonna help us out, and here's where it helps us out a little bit. Mvm plant service equals plant service. This, uh, read this carefully. We're saying that the model view model will call this plant service attribute to get the plant data. And what we're doing here is we're, ass we're assigning or reassigning this plant service to the model view model. What's the difference between the plant service on the right and the plant service on the left? Well, when the assignment's over, they'll both be the same essentially. But what I do want to point out here, the reason why we're doing this in the test is the plant service on the right 
is the one that we have mocked up above, and we've specifically, specifically mocked it to return these values, as opposed to the plan service that is the default one that's associated with our view model that essentially does nothing but returns live data. Now I've come out of distraction free mode and I'd like to I'd like to try to run our test one more time. So confirm Eastern Redbud outputs Eastern Redbud. We're going to go ahead and run this test and test pass. So you see that by mocking the data, we are able to create a, essentially a known set of data that we can test against. And that allows us to truly unit test one class. In this case, it's our view model class. I'm happy with how things have gone. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and commit this directory. And we'll say finish redbud unit test with mock data. We see push successful. Now, one neat thing is we've already integrated our Circle CI, so this test is now automatically run as part of our CI CD pipeline. I'm a bit surprised though because it came up with an X here when I went to our branch consume JSON on GitHub. Uh, I click on this, all checks have failed, I go to details. And it gives me a little bit of information that I need to, uh, basically it, it, it failed based on a couple of warnings, which are not important. So what it recommends is that I add uh, a, a configuration, there we go, uh, to ignore lint options. I went ahead and added that to my apps build.gradle file, committed and pushed and got another error, but this one's legitimate because what it's telling me is that my search for garbage test uh, failed, and that's correct. Reason being, sure enough, I am saying that if any string is passed in, I should return Eastern Redbud, White Oak, and Red Oak, even if that string is garbage. So we need to fix this. We can simply be a bit more specific on the fetch plans. Let's go down here and let's say or, which will allow us to pass in either term. So we'll say or, and we'll say um, Redbud, and then we'll say Quercus. Save. Now we still haven't handled the case of what if it's not a red butter or a corcus? Well, let's copy this line and let's do one more time. Let's use another qualifier. Let's say not. Note that I can chain these together. So up here on line number 59 is the case where it is either a red bud or a corcus, where corcus is an oak. Down below we're saying give me the case where it is not a redbud or a quercus. And in that case, what we want to do is return a new mutable live data, which contains an array list of plant objects. So we'll fix a couple of typos here, just like so. So case number one, a redbud or a quercus. Case number two, anything but a redbud or a quercus. Now, of course, this wouldn't work for real data because we'd have to cover a whole bunch of different cases. But remember, we're just mocking. That's all. We're just getting our test-driven design test up and running uh, to the point it gives us some predictable output. Let's see how this one goes. See the confirm eastern redbud is passed. The uh, search for redbud returns redbud and search for garbage returns nothing. All of these now pass. So once again, I'm in a point where I'm ready to commit and push and go to push this up to our uh, version control system. Push is successful. We see now a yellow box indicating that Circle CI is currently running. Sure enough, we have running. Looks like it's restoring cache and downloading dependencies and running tests. Circle CI looks to be pretty happy. Let's go back and oh, sure enough, take a look. We got the green checkbox and all checks have passed. So we see here, all of these things together are very helpful. The idea of test-driven design and the idea of continuous integration so that you can make sure you haven't broken something that somebody else created you didn't even know about. And this was a perfect example. I went through this whole test trying to confirm that we had red buds and that we had quercus, but I didn't pay attention to the alternate test to make sure that garbage didn't return anything. And Circle CI caught me. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.